Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to another one of our comparison reviews. We've got Gregorio with us. Hello. We've got Sunshine. We've fantastic. got fantastic middleweight motorcycles to review. And uh, yeah, so this should be a good one. What we've got here is the new 790 Duke, now made by CF Moto in China. Whether that's relevant or not, I don't know. Just slipping it in there. What have <laughs> you got there, Greg? This is the all new Suzuki GSX-8S which are parallel twin, very, very similar sort of spec sheets, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, similar price points. So an obvious comparison really, isn't it? Exactly. And if we were playing top trumps, the KTM, the KTM got it. it, but it's not all about figures and facts. It's about what they like to ride. And Correct. that is what we're going to let you know today. Yeah. So uh, if you're interested in these two bikes, stick around, stay tuned, get yourself a nice fresh cuppa, plenty of milk, don't listen to him, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> drop seat, roll the intro. So we've got the KTM 790 in this grey, which I actually think looks really, really nice in this grey. A lot of people always complain, they say, oh, why have they got to make their bikes orange all the time? Well, they haven't. They've just got a couple of little orange flecks on it, this sort of grey finish. Actually, in that colour, I really like. I do really like that. This is the all-new Suzuki GSX 8S. Bit of a difficult thing to say, actually, is it a name? So I've been riding this now for, I'm going to say, about a week and a half, something like that. So it's not like a first ride for me. I've not had a go on the KTM yet. But I have to say, my impressions so far of it are really good. Really, really strong engine. But these are exactly the same price. This is why we've decided to compare the KTM and the Suzuki, because you know everyone's done the Hornet versus the Suzuki. And I think the general consensus is the Suzuki is the slightly better bike overall. The engine's better in the Hornet, but overall, as a package, the Suzuki is slightly better as a, as a complete package, uh, overall package. So the, the KTM and the Suzuki, as these bikes are exactly the same price, 7999 this is probably what I would consider to be a better comparison test than doing another Hornet GSXS comparison. Anyway, let's get on it. Babble. Let's jump on. So here we are aboard the Suzuki GSX-8S and familiar territory with the dashboard. It's exactly the same pretty much as the V-Strom DE 800 and 1050, um, other than it's missing a few little bits and pieces like the temperature gauge, but other than that, it's the same. So the little KTM, I mean, I've been riding this again for about a week. You know, I've ridden the GSX 8S before, I actually went on the launch of that. So I'll put a link to the video, to the launch video at the top. It's a brilliant little bike, but the problem is, so is the 790. So is the 790, is excellent, you know, and we did the, uh, the 890, Duke R versus the Street Triple the other week and jumping on the 790 it feels very very familiar to the 890R. The only things which sort of give it away that you're not riding the 890R is the brakes are not as good as the 890. They're okay the brakes but they're you know they're not quite as much power there as much feel there as the 890 brakes but you know that's of course got stylemas and everything. The suspension is completely non-adjustable on both the bikes but it's so well set up the WP suspension on this little 790 again it's quite hard to tell the difference Greg unbelievably is it really I'll tell you what as you just, as you just powered away from that tight right hand about there the 790 sounded really nice it's pretty rapid yeah it looks quick if this was a top trumps game the, the, the KTM's got it in every respect it's about 10 horsepower more powerful it's got i think nine stop bragging stop <laughs> bragging <laughs> nine newton meters more torque and it's at least 10 kilos lighter is it really 10 kilos lighter it's at least 10 kilos it's 175 kilos dry but they don't give the wet weight do they on the uh, the ktm no. whereas the suzuki is 202 wet so it's, it's probably 185 wet you know maximum maximum so it's at least 10 kilos lighter how have you been finding the GSX AS, Greg, over the last sort of week or so? Really good. I find it's it's really comfortable to ride. It's easy to ride, and there is, I would say, no irritations with it at all. The engine's lovely. It's got loads of real-world torque and grunt, so it pulls away lovely from the lights. 
and it's got a nice amount of engine braking being a twin um, and yeah they're, they're, there's nothing to complain about the brakes are nice the seats comfortable the riding position's good it all just feels natural the controls are in the right place it's re really impressive actually and you won't be losing me this morning <laughs> even with the extra horses that you've got extra horsepower it's all down to horsepower <laughs> when you jump on this ktm we will do a swap in a minute it, it feels so natural it feels so talky and the thing with the ktm it's got bags of bottom end torque which the suzuki's got as well isn't it, it it's all about Definitely. the torque on that suzuki engine but the ktm seems to have similar levels of torque but it's also got a hit at the top yeah which the suzuki doesn't have the suzuki doesn't have that it doesn't like to be revved hard um, it just gets a little bit vibey and there's not a lot there so there's no point you're better off just not short shifting i wouldn't say but riding that you know torque that you've got available right oh, here we go on he gets on he gets the seat on the ktm is wider than the suzuki yeah isn't it it's really wide on this which i actually quite like because i think that definitely makes it feel more comfortable when you're in the saddle for a while sitting on this i can tell it's a lot more the the, the rear of the bike's a lot lower there's, you're much higher up, you're sort of cantered forward a bit more on the KTM and also the, the pegs are a bit behind you on the KTM. It feels a bit like the Super Duke I was riding the other week actually. The bars feel much higher and maybe a little bit wider on the Suzuki as well. Quite a different riding position, a bit more relaxed perhaps on the Suzuki. It is more relaxed, it feels more aggressive. The, you sat higher on the KTM and the bars feel lower. Come in front Greg, come in front, let's have a look at you on the, uh, on the 790. The throttle response is on the A mode on the Suzuki and I see you've turned the traction control off Greg as well on this one. <laughs> you've been having some fun. <laughs> yes I have. <laughs> yeah it'd be quite interesting with the roll-ons actually because this does have a fair amount of punch sort of below 4,000 revs doesn't it? I think the Suzuki's got more bottom end grunt than this. That would be my take. It, it certainly feels like it. Whether it has on paper, I don't know. And that's not. To, this is lovely. What's your feeling on the KTM then after sort of riding it for five minutes? It, it's really nice. And I've owned an 890, as you know. And so it's, it feels very familiar. I find the riding position really comfortable. And as always with the Dukes, they look fairly small, but they don't feel small to ride. So it's. Uh, I really like it already, actually. Both of these bikes are incredible fun for. <laughs> hey grand aren't they? <laughs> yeah the brakes are very good on this actually very good on this yeah i think the brakes are better on the suzuki than than this i have to say they it's not that they're not strong enough on the duke but they're just there's not a lot of feel there at all um whereas i think on the suzuki there yeah i hadn't considered the brakes as being a little bit substandard which i think is always a good sign isn't it yeah i'd, I'd happily i'd happily own this and it does all you need, doesn't it, really? It does really, doesn't it? And I think, yeah, it's, it's a very, very, it's just quite a tricky one, this actually. I have to say, I think this is going to be quite difficult it to, is. To, to come to a conclusion. I'm sensing you like that then, don't you? Yeah, I do. I said to you before we started, after riding the KTM, I said, oh, it's going to wipe the floor with the Suzuki. It's going to wipe the floor with it. But I don't think it is. I don't think it is going to wipe the floor with it. Yeah, the Suzuki's just got a lovely drive, isn't it? I mean, you can be very lazy with the Suzuki. And I think it's a very nice bike just to sort of poodle along because of where the torque is in, in, the, in the rev band. And it sort of gets to the point, it's because it is a bit flat at the top, you just end up riding that torque. So it actually encourages you to sort of slow down a little bit and just enjoy it a bit more maybe exactly and it is very enjoyable and as you say if you ride it between 50 and 70 percent it really makes sense i think whereas the ktm's definitely got a little bit more of a hooligan side to it isn't it, it encourages you to uh, go a little bit faster well it doesn't encourage me because i'm very sensible but it probably does you i've seen you riding when the cameras are <laughs> off <laughs> And they're both at a level whereby, even if you're a more experienced rider, you know, he's ridden litre bikes and, and faster machines, there's something to be said for this class of bike, where the power's down a little bit, you've got to work the engines, you know, when you are going a bit quicker, you're sort of getting closer to the limits of what the bikes can do. So they're jumping around a bit more, you know, you feel like you're riding them harder at a lower speed, which is it's where the fun is, isn't it? 
What tyres is this KTM running, do you know? Uh, Chinese specials. Are they really? Remolds? They're, they're Maxis, Maxis. <laughs> yeah, Remolds. Maxis tyres. I'm getting Brewers Drew. I'm opposite, I'm fully erect. <laughs> Let's pull over and have a little swap back again. I don't want to swap, I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get off of there, do you? This, K this KTM is absolutely bloody brilliant. It is I'm good, with you. It? I'm with you, mate. It doesn't feel like you're riding a budget middleweight. And I know these are £8,000. People say, well, that's not budget chop. See how much money you've got. But as far you could get that for £59 a month on PCP. Yeah. 50, 60 quid a month for this they're doing really good interest rates on it as well and i think the suzuki slightly more a month if you're pcping but 60 quid a month it's, it's almost incredible. tempted to get one just to go and have a buzz about on it occasionally isn't it? it's incredible you feel like you're sat further much further forward on the motorcycle and much more weight over the front of the bike i think on the ktm yeah you're sat in the suzuki more the bars are a lot higher further away i think the bars are narrow on the suzuki yeah i think you're right and it feels like almost the my hands are down by my waist, they feel really close to me. I think the KTM, the riding position is definitely more aggressive, a bit racier, isn't it? Whereas the Suzuki is a little bit more relaxed. There's more weight over the front, isn't there, on the on the KTM? Definitely, my bum sort of canted up, my feet are slightly behind my hips even, you know? It, it's a similar position to the Super Duke, but a bit less weight on your wrist than the Super Duke. The Super Duke's, the bars are just a bit further forward. The bars do feel quite tight. I don't want to call it cr cramped, but I, I thought I preferred this position, but after getting off the Suzuki, this feels a little bit weird. It's definitely more aggressive. Which do you prefer? I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know yet. There's a little bit more power in the mid-range on the KTM, like over little crests and stuff. You can give it a handful and it actually lifts the front. Whereas it won't do that for me on the Suzuki anyway. Suzuki's fast in the mid-range though. It's really pulls, doesn't it? You've got to rev the KTM a little bit more, haven't you, to to keep up, I think. But it has got more at the top there. We'll see when we do the roll-ons. I've got 25 kilos of gravel in the back of my backpack to put on the back of the bike to slow you down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll go for a big burger beforehand. <laughs> it might take a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's got a nice little sort of burble and a bit of a pop to the, the KTM on that exhaust note. As you, if you put a pipe on it, I think it'll sound absolutely lovely. The gearbox is also really nice on the KTM. The quick shifter works well, up and down. It's sort of quite a precise clunk into gear. And I think the Suzuki is quite similar, isn't it? They're, they're both impressive. I think the gearboxes on both are really nice. You know, and I, as I say <clears throat> earlier, having ridden this for about a week and a half, there's no annoyances. I get on this, I ride it, and straight away I'm enjoying myself. I'm not thinking about anything. You know, I'm just, just taking it all in. They're, they're both very impressive. And the gearboxes are lovely. The KTM gearbox as well, I think, it, one with you, is really, really nice, isn't it? Really direct. One thing I would say, I think the Suzuki is slightly more vibey through the bike. I think about 5,000 revs on the Suzuki can get a little bit of buzz for your foot pegs. Yeah, I, Where the, I agree. Where the KTM, this, this 790, 890 engine is so, so hardly any vibes to it at all. You know, it's really quite impressive. And then both the bikes have got twin balancing shafts to try and reduce those vibrations, but I think on the KTM, you, you can barely even feel anything. Nothing wrong with the handling on this puppy. Uh, <laughs> he's off. So you got all that horsepower and I've lost you. It's a cow in the way, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Slow boy. <laughs> They're good, they're both good. That's what's so good about these bikes is that they handle, don't they? And I think that that's the thing. You know, the MT07's great, the Hornet's great, but they're they're lacking a little bit in the, in the handling when you push the bikes on. And for me, that's that's the fun in motorcycling, is the, yeah, is the handling, you know? And, and that's why I love these, because you can get it, you can chuck them through the twisties, they handle, you can lay them down. And that's just with this sort of OEM rubber. If you put something a bit stickier on, it'd be even better. Yeah, I agree. I think if you put those um, Power Cut 2s on that 790 KTM, I don't think it would actually feel a lot worse to ride than the 890, to be brutally honest. I think the only thing that you, the only thing that lets it down a little bit are the brakes. Um, but beyond that, it feels virtually identical, I'd say. Yeah, it's, it's quite amazing, isn't it? 
and the whole characteristic, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't have as much power as the 890, but it's still, it doesn't feel that It's quick enough, it's quick different. enough though, isn't it? It's quick enough, yeah, it's absolutely quick enough. You know, when you own a bike, you're not full throttle, rinsing its neck every two seconds, are you? So you, it doesn't, in the real world, it feels the same. So I think one of the other things that's worth probably mentioning, the elephant in the room, is the KTM 790 is built in China, isn't it? It is, yeah. So the, the reason this bike is eight grand, you know, and, and coming in at the same price point as a Suzuki, it is manufactured by CF Moto in China, which, you know, with KTM and, and CF Moto, they've, they've started, it's a new company. And uh, I think CF Moto own 51% of that of that company and and this one yeah is indeed made in china it doesn't actually you would never know would you it doesn't doesn't feel or look any different does it than the austrian built duke range and the rest of the bikes that they make i can't tell the difference obviously proofs in the pudding i guess over over the long term but it must be this it's got to be the same components isn't it i think they just do the assembly in china so i don't know if they're casting engine casings you know obviously a lot of these bikes are just bought in parts anyway like the suspension all the electronics you know come from the the manufacturer and it's more of an assembly than manufactured in china if you know what i mean i don't know for sure i've tried to do a bit of research but there's not much information out there about what is actually made in china i mean probably most of the components on all bikes come from china anyway when you yeah, when you look exactly. into it where all the electronics are manufactured and everything you know and everything these days comes from china doesn't it my tv is made in china my, my fridge freezer is made in china so you know it's all about quality control isn't it and making uh, sure is, that yeah. that's in place and i know they have ktm workers actually on the, the manufacturing floor in china sort of overseeing the quality so you know we can't test things like quality you know what's it going to be like over time you know you just you i guess that's one of your sort of buying decisions isn't it you have to take into account and it would in fairness i think it, it would be something that i thought about long and hard because it it's certainly not a bonus i don't think is it no. but um i guess they're trying to offer you a you know ktm austrian exotica but keep the price point competitive to the other bike so i kind of get the challenge um but yeah i think you know naturally i would be more drawn to you know a japanese bike built in japan which we all know the quality is good versus you know chinese bikes that are built and sold as chinese branded bikes don't have a great reputation do they and i'm sure that that will be nothing like those but it's just something to think about isn't it every time we, i post a ktm video people are like oh made in china it's like it's only the 790 and 790 adventure which are actually made in china the other models are made in austria i think some of the 125s could be made in india but i think that you have to accept we ktm probably have to accept they're going to lose some sales of the 790 because people will be put off by that and i think that is a reality um i'd be interested to see what you you know your subscribers say in the comments about it all really but i'm sure there'll be strong opinions one way or the other i'm sure there will so the only problem i've got with this review so far is normally we have a little bit of a laugh and it's been too serious for me this morning chopsy so before you uh, before you ask me no i'm not prepared to go down any gravel lanes on this today <laughs> <laughs> any big puddles big puddles maybe not for big puddles <laughs> no thank you a bit chillier over here i'd say yeah it is a little bit chillier isn't it yeah i reckon i better ride no handed in it just use my nipples <laughs> you could on the dune with the bars a bit closer to you <laughs> well i could in my moods <laughs> Fourth gear roll on, fourth gear, 40 miles an hour. You count it in. In three, two, one, go. Ooh, it's pretty close, it's pretty close actually. That's not boding well for the uh, Suzuki with the weight difference. I do need that 25 kilo bag of cement to put on the back of the bike <laughs> for you. <laughs> Let's see how the Suzuki handles. Yeah, it's, it's still, it's still very nice, very lays in nicely. It's missing a little bit of mid-range when you try and really open it up. But it's still very easy. Yeah, it's, it's, they're both fantastic. It's really difficult to 
to sort of say, isn't it? I think maybe the KTM feels a little bit sharper, maybe a tiny bit sharper. I feel I feel more confident on the KTM uh, on those bends, but that's it is close. There's not much in it. There's not much in it. The Suzuki's surprisingly good. If I was going to do a track day, I'd take the KTM, but I think it's marginal. Let's do another fourth gear roll on at 40. In three, two, one, go. Did you? Pretty similar in the way you're pulling away there. I, I, I think that mid-range, there's there could be nothing in it. I seem to be about dropping about the same as what I was when I was on the uh, on the KTM, which actually it means the, the KTM is surprisingly strong because that's the Suzuki sort of party trick, if you like, isn't it? The KTM's quicker though because the, the Suzuki doesn't really like to be revved, whereas the KTM does. No, no, when, when we do the flat out second gear, I think the KTM's gonna romp it. And I think the Suzuki's actually stronger maybe between three and 4,000 or, or two and 4,000 than the, the KTM. But I think from four upwards, I think they're very, very, very similar. That mid range four, four to eight, let's call it. I think they're similar. 10 mile hour and then we're, we're floor them. In three, Two, one, go! You had a bit of wheelie to contend with that time, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I just kept it powered on though, the wheelie control works well. Yeah, sorted it, sorted it. Uh, it's a lot less daunting doing these sort of power runs on, <laughs> on these middleweights than litre bikes, isn't it? Right, me on the KTM this time. In three, two, one, go! Was much closer. Close, close, close. Which the means KTM's it, got it though, isn't it? The KTM's got it. To be that close, the KTM's got it. That extra 10 horsepower. I think it's got another eight newton meters of torque as well than the Suzuki. It's got it. It's got it. At the, it <laughs> it's got it. Simple as that. But it's still. It's not as big a difference as you would perhaps think. I uh, know exactly. I mean, the Suzuki's done itself proud there, considering, hasn't it? Oh so, dear, what a, what a morning's riding. It's been mate. really, really good fun, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, really, yeah, good, really good. And I think what sort of stood out to me when we started the video, after riding that more recently, I thought the KTM was going to absolutely trounce the Suzuki. And it was almost yeah. a bit like, hang on, we've got a bike from a different class coming out here to, to review against each other. But you were too hasty. I too hasty. Too hasty. Too Jumping hasty. back on the Suzuki again, yeah. it's a bloody good bike. It's really good. I've really been enjoying it. I've had it about a week and a half, maybe a couple of weeks, and I haven't been the 790 for a good few years now. Yeah. The Suzuki is a really good bike. There's no annoyances. It's plenty quick enough. In fact, I think in that mid range and the bottom uh, yeah, rev yeah, range, yeah. it feels a bit punchier than yeah. the KTM even. At the top end, not so much. The brakes are better on the Suzuki, yeah. I think, than the KTM. And don't get me wrong, the KTM is also a fabulous bike. Yeah. They're both exceptionally good, but I think the Suzuki is an impressive yeah. bike and I'd happily own one actually. Yeah. I think yeah. it depends what sort of riding you want to do. If you want to go out and I have agree. a bit more of a lazy Sunday morning poodle round, I think this is slightly more comfortable. The engine lends, that bottom end really lends it itself to that sort of riding. It's really it? nice, really relaxed. Yeah. You're taking the scenery and I think if you ride that at sort of 50, 60 yeah. percent, uh, it's just really, really, really enjoyable. Yeah. And uh, you don't want for anything else actually. No. Um, but you're right, once you get into that real more spirited type riding, then I yeah. think the Suzuki gets it. It doesn't feel like it's enjoying being thrashed, if you <laughs> yeah, know what I mean. Yeah. And, and I think the KTM definitely prefers, it does. you know, using all of that usable rev range yeah. uh, better than the Suzuki. I, but I, it's, I a close, it's a close call between the two. I 100% agree. I mean, if I was going to do a track day, I'll take KTM. the KTM. It's got a track mode. You yeah. can separate wheelie control. You know, yeah, yeah. the KTM's got all of the features the Super Duke's got. Obviously, yeah. you've got to pay for them, but you yeah. can put everything on that, including yeah. cruise control, heated grips. You know, you don't get all those options with the Suzuki. It's sort of geared up as more of a, a budget bike, you know? It is, yeah. And the KTM can sort of do everything. But yeah. I, the question is, your money, your checkbook, which one would you take? Because, you know, the, the elephant in the room is the fact that the, the KTM is made in China. Now, it's only the 790 models which are made in China, the 790 Adventure and the 790 Duke, but is that a consideration in, in your buying decision? 
it is a, it is a consideration. It would be for me. And, I, you know, if I'm being totally honest, I think I, think I prefer the KTM just. Yeah. yeah, I think the riding position I prefer over the Suzuki's, they're quite different, the riding positions, and it's definitely a little bit more of an aggressive riding position. But the China factor does play a part in it. And also, in reality, would I buy one of these when you can get an 890? I'm not talking about the R, just the base 890 yeah. for not that much more money. Yeah. And so... I think it. Oh, I don't, I don't it's, even. It's, it's a close. It, it, it's it? really close. It's a, I it, think the better bike out of the two is probably the KTM. Just. Not, just. Not. Not leagues away. Like I thought it was going to no, be. No, just. Just better. Yeah. It's whether that just better is it, worth the potential. I mean, potential it may be risk. Absolutely fine. Uh, exactly. Maybe absolutely fine. But yeah, you know, you, it's all these nigg in the back of your mind. You'd be like, oh. Yeah. It's really hard to call. I, I think actually, I'm going to answer the question, otherwise it's a pointless review. I think if it was my money, I think I'd probably go for the Suzuki. Yeah, just yeah. that piece of money. And I, it's not quite as good in some areas, but I think overall it's a risk-free package yeah. and I would, I know I would enjoy the Suzuki. So I think in reality, I'd probably buy the Suzuki. Yeah. Yeah, but if I was not buying one and someone gave me the keys for free, then I think the KTM offers more, a little bit more enjoyment for my yeah. type of riding style. And that may be a bit of a cop-out, but I think if yeah. it was my money, I'd buy the Suzuki. That, that, that's the thing. Yeah. If I was exactly the same as you, I, I would take the KTM out of the two. But whether I would... Actually part with your own actually money. Actually part with my own money. To, I don't know, maybe I would. Yeah. Maybe I would. And maybe I would. But it, it's, that, that's the, that's the, the issue. Yeah. That's, that's the thing, that's the nagging doubt in the back of your mind, isn't it? But at the two if we're just reviewing them as what we've done this morning as motorcycles this KTM. i think we both take the ktm but the suzuki has really shown that it's a it's really us. capable bike it's impressive it's us. a lovely bike the quality of it looks fantastic yeah, yeah, yeah. the styling looks great yeah um yeah it's, it's good don't, don't just automatically no go ktm no this agreed. is bloody good it is there you are fantastic there we are that's it so if you enjoyed it thanks very much what we're going to have coming soon in a couple of weeks is the super duke evo versus <gasps> the mt10 sp so we've gone I from cannot these wait. I <laughs> it's going to be good wait. that one the old first gear roll-ons are going to be interesting <laughs> they're going to be petrified <laughs> <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing the the next level up if you like of middleweight nakeds don't forget to press that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one cheers, cheers. guys